Gordon the Big Engine is the eighth book of the Railway series, and was first published in 1953. It was written by Wilbert Audrey and illustrated by Clarence Reginald Dowdy. Over 30 years later, all four of its short stories were adapted into four short episodes of Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. How faithful were these adaptations? Let's see if we can spot the differences. The book's first and third stories were produced for the television series First Season in 1984. The second story wasn't adapted until Series 3, and the final story was brought to model life in Series 4. Off the Rails begins with Gordon resting in a siding, where he is teased by Henry and Percy. In the episode, this scene takes place right next to Knapford Station, but the illustration portrays the siding to be quite far out of the station. Also, Gordon was given extra dialogue in the episode to anchor his pompous attitude. The narration in the book states that the upcoming events of the story take place a few days after Henry insulted Gordon. Although likely not the intent, this makes it seem that Gordon has been sitting in the same siding for days, and thus the time gap was removed in the episode, potentially for this reason. Henry is annoyed that Gordon references his infamous collision while pulling the flying kipper, but in the book, Henry seems to have ignored the attempted offence. Fancy speaking to me like that, to me who has never had an accident. Aren't jammed whistles and burnt safety valves accidents? Asked Percy innocently. No, indeed, they are not accidents. They're, well, they're just I spirits. I mean, it might happen to any engine, but to come off the rails, well, I ask you, is it right? Is it decent? The ditch Gordon slithers into is much larger and steeper in the book. In the episode, the ditch is quite small and really more of a marshland containing broken up rusty engine parts. For some reason, there is actually a track leading to the ditch, and there isn't even a fence to separate the two. Although the time period is supposedly the same, ironically the Fat Controller was using a more modern telephone in the 1950s than the 1980s. In the book, Gordon is bothered by a few toads, tadpoles, and a newt, similar to the toad Thomas came into contact with in the episode Trust Thomas. The illustration and the narration states that Henry helped with Gordon's rescue, but in the episode, only James can be seen pulling Gordon's back end. Also missing is Sir Topham Hatt, who can be seen watching the operation in Dalby's illustration. Shilly o' Gordon fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch. Shilly o' Gordon fell in a ditch all on a Monday morning. <laughs> Leaves had its name changed to The Trouble with Mud when adapted in 1992. The story in the book takes place presumably the day after the events of Off the Rails, with Gordon being cleaned and scolded by the Fat Controller for being silly. The first half of the episode is quite different, in that Gordon has somehow been covered with mud, which he stubbornly refuses to have washed off. While this does seem quite out of character for the big engine, frankly I believe it was written in a way that makes the situation relatively believable. I haven't time to dawdle over my appearance. I'm far too busy to waste time with water. Gordon is therefore punished not because he was disobedient and caused a self-inflicted crash, but because he thinks it is reasonable to pull the express looking more brown than blue. While shunting, Gordon warns James that the hill is slippery. In the episode, there is a time jump between Gordon shunting and his warning. You'll probably need some help with the express, you know. Me? Help? Huh. I don't need any help on hills. The sequence where James gets stuck on Gordon's hill due to the track being covered with leaves goes on for three pages, whereas in the episode, because it was halfway over by this point, it lasts less than a minute. In the book, as James starts to struggle, the fireman puts sand on the rails, but this makes things worse, and the weight of the coaches starts to drag him backwards. The crew then have a chat, and the guard is sent back to inform the signalman and find an engine to push James. As in the episode, Gordon happened to be nearby and offers to help. 
the episode ends with Thomas asking Sir Topham Hatt to forgive Gordon and let him pull coaches again, which he agrees to. However, the original story does not resolve the Express Engine's punishment, as the book still had two more stories to tell. My, my eye. My, my eye. Down the Mine was actually chosen to be the first episode adapted by Britt Holcroft and David Mitten as a test pilot. It obviously proved successful enough for a full series to be commissioned, unlike the very first time the Railway series was produced for television, which coincidentally happened the same year this book was published. The entire short was reshot with updated models, and the only evidence of its existence is this slightly different model design of Thomas. Phew, what a funny smell. Annie, Clarabelle, do you know what I think it is? It's ditch water. Before Gordon could answer, Thomas puffed away. Thomas appears to be pushing his train in the first two illustrations of the story. While it could be the wind blowing the steam from his funnel backwards, it would not be unusual for small engines to push their trains backwards rather than pull them forwards. Thomas is taking some empty trucks to the mine. This may have been an illustration error, as the narrator states he is going to collect them at the mine, and then when he arrives, they are in front of him. This is likely why he goes to the mine without any trucks in the episode. The fireman manages to jump back into the cab and stop Thomas, but the ground still caves in due to the engine's weight. In the episode, Thomas is not stopped, and he rolls along into a hole. The remaining three pages of the story were more or less perfectly adapted into the final two minutes of the episode. <laughs> Down a mine, is he? Oh, what a joke! Paint Pots and Queens is the book's final story, and was not adapted until 1995. It begins with the engines discussing who will get to pull the royal train. The episode starts at sunset, as Thomas and Gordon are returning to the shed. The narrator not only claims that the events of Off the Rails and Down the Mine have just happened, but also that they happened on the same day. The decision to create this massive continuity error was due to Allcroft and Mitten wanting to keep this episode subplot of Gordon being in disgrace. So while it was nice of them to try and retain the book's continuity and storyline, they are three seasons too late. When Henry lets off steam, causing the painter to fall off his ladder, he is standing just outside of the station. In the book, Henry is arriving with his train, and the painter is painting the inside of the station. Mmm, dear me. You look like an iced cake, Henry. <laughs> Another difference to this scene is that in the illustration, Henry's boiler is covered by a longer strip of paint. Gordon asks the Fat Controller if Thomas can work on his branch line again, which is apparently his, at the time, undisclosed punishment for being naughty in Down the Mine. And Thomas asks if Gordon can pull coaches again. But in the episode, only Gordon asks for Thomas's punishment to be revoked, as Thomas doesn't return the favour. Naturally, this doesn't affect the outcome. None of the engines were given Union Jack flags in the episode, and instead of being attached to his buffer beam, the Royal Arms, or something vaguely resembling the Royal Arms, have been placed on either side of Gordon's smoke box. Unlike the episode, only the Queen's arm is seen in the illustrations, but unlike the book, the Queen does not have any dialogue in the episode. There is a much larger crowd in the book, complete with a few police officers to prevent them from getting too close to the Queen. The engine's cheering and whistling makes the Fat Controller hold his ears, but the Queen doesn't mind. Only the first eight numbered engines are at the station, as despite Donald, Douglas and Oliver being on the island by this point in the TV series, they were not by the 8th Railway series book. However, although he isn't mentioned, or was on the island at the time this book was published, Duck is at the station. The narration in the episode says that all the engines were proud to have met the Queen, but the book only mentions the engines she personally thanked. Thomas, Edward, and the supposed star of this book, Gordon. 
I'm too old to pull important trains, said Edward sadly. I'm in disgrace, sighed Gordon gloomily. Well, he'll choose me, of course, <laughs> boasted James. Choose you, <laughs> snorted Henry. You can't climb hills. 